पूरे जोश के साथ आए हो फॉर दिस सी सी हि सो लाइक लाइक आई नो हम लोग सारे यंगस्टर्स है एंड लाइक फुल वाइब के साथ we are all present over here so as we begin like as always i want to begin with a small ice breaker so thoda mushkil ho sakta hai ya fir easy bhi ho sakta hai like it depends on you how you take the questions so i'll be asking you uh, like i'll be telling you some verses or maybe word of god so you have to like if i tell you the verse you have to give me which word of god is it or if i give you the word of god you can answer me with which verse is it so are you ready for the game if you are ready can you give me a yes yeah like yes i am like i'm really sure that you are quite ready for this game so thoda sa bible side mein kahin rakha hua hai to take it open it and be ready to give the first answer okay so i'll be like uh really excited to know who would be the winner this time i don't know if jebin is here or else har bar ki tarah woh leke jata but yeah anyways we can give others a chance if he is not here so to all of you the first question is where in the bible is written god is love i repeat where in the bible is it written god is love <laughs> 
if you know the answer comment it in the chat box so yeah i'm waiting for your answers i saw many Uh, now I am waiting for. Okay. Uh, yes. Okay. Helena has given one Corinthians. Hey, kya? Nahi. Okay. Daniel says John. Um, really close. Okay. Michelle's career is very very close. One John. Aage kya hai? Bata. One John. <laughs> okay. Uh, Xander Peter here has is like super close. He says one John four. Okay, Rosa says it's one John four eight, and it's the right answer. So yeah, Rosa is the winner of this like first question. So in the Bible, it like one John four eight me likha hai ki God is love, and like um, Justin Vargas and all of you others are like really close. So you had to give the like pura correct answer. So it is in one John. Four eight. So, are you ready for the second question? <laughs> are you ready for the second question? So, anyways, I'll ask this question. This to yar sabko pata hi hona chahiye iska answer because it is this word of God is really close to all the Delhi J Y. So, the question is in one John four nineteen. What does it say? What does one John four nineteen say? Um, can I have the answers, please? Do you know what does one John four nineteen say? Okay, I'm waiting for the answer. Maybe because of some network issues, I'm not getting the answer. Like still, I'm waiting. So if you want a clue, I'll give you the clue. It's like it's related, very much related to the destination love program. So one John four nineteen. What does it say? koi hai jisko iska answer pata hai like you all have like roamed around with like shirt ke piche likha hua hai so obviously agar shirt tum logo ne wo shirt liya tha to you can go and check out your destination dl wala shirt ja ke dekhoge to you give oh yeah i have got the answer so it's again rosa who has given the first answer along with close competition and justin vargas ne bhi right answer diya hai to both of them uh like when we love because he first loved us yes exactly we all love just because he first loved us agar unhone nahi pyar kiya tha i am sure like hum log like we won't be loving anyone so yeah it is because he first loved us that we are also like we are also love you know we human beings are very selfish only when someone loves us do we love that person back so in the same way it was jesus who loved us first and yes we also loved him back so the last and the final question oh uh, alfi juman bol rahi hai ki kya maine rosa ko bata ke diya so no i haven't told her anything yeah rosa is my sister but yeah i have not told her any answers but anyways let's move on to the third question it's the last question so it's like very simple bahut sare jagah mein suna hoga it's written in 1 corinthians 13 mai verse nahi bataungi if you want you can Give me the answer. So it's a fill in the blanks. Okay, love is dash and love is dash. It's like a short as a definition of love. Likha hua hai one Corinthians thirteen me. So what is love? Love is dash and love is dash. Like this answer, you surely would know this answer because very super easy answer is ga. Uh, like i really love this word of god uh, it's written in 1 corinthians 13 if you have the bible nearby you can go and check it out what does 1 corinthians 13 say so what is love is i mean love is dash and love is dash oh yeah we have answer from tanya didi tanya joseph has answered love is patient and kind yes exactly the answer is love is patient and kind so लाइक आई एम श्योर हम सबको अब पता चल गया होगा वॉट इज लव लव इज पेशेंट एंड लव इज काइंड एंड हु इज गॉड गॉड इज लव 
एंड वी लव बिकॉज ही फर्स्ट लव डेस तो ये तीन वर्ड ऑफ गॉड्स हैं जो हमें लाइक like, आज मे बी सीखने को नहीं एटलीस्ट वन मोर टाइम रिवाइंड मतलब सोचने को मिला है कि हाई थ्री वर्ड ऑफ गॉड्स सो जस्ट रिमेंबर दीज थ्री वर्ड ऑफ गॉड एटलीस्ट कोई पूछेगा तुम्हें वर्ड ऑफ गॉड आते तो तीन वर्ड ऑफ गॉड एटलीस्ट याद रखना वन जॉन फोर एट इज गॉड इज लव वन जॉन फोर नाइनटीन इज वी लव बिकॉज ही फर्स्ट लव डस वन कोरेंटियंस थर्टीन इट इज लव इज पेशेंट एंड काइंड ओके डैनल हैज गिवन दी वर्स वन कोरेंटियंस थर्टीन फोर सो आई एम श्योर आप सबों को बहुत अच्छा लगा होगा गेम खेल के यस विनर्स आर रोसा जस्टिन एंड तानिया दीदी सो लाइक जिन लाइक इट्स नॉट अ प्रॉब्लम दैट इफ यू वर नॉट एबल टू विन डोंट वरी फॉर दोस्ट हू गॉट इट रॉन्ग और मे बी लाइक यू डिन नॉट Not give the right answer in the beginning. तो at least बहाना मिल गया कि जाके at least अब जाके मैं बाइबल पढ़कर रहूंगा या रहूंगी ताकि अगली बार जब सी सी में आए कोई क्वेश्चन पूछेंगे तो ये आई कैन गिव दी आंसर सो मूविंग फॉरवर्ड लाइक वी लाइक जीजस यूथ का प्रोग्राम कभी भी इट्स लाइक इट्स सुना रह जाता है म्यूजिक के बिना सो वी हैव uh yeah uh you can all share for him yeah so um uh, like we'll be moving into a small time of praise and worship our music uh you can all like uh, make a place for yourself so that like we'll be enjoying in this through throughout this so yeah we have akil bhai here thank you veronica thank you thank you for the quiz so uh and welcome all again uh, to this edition of cross connection it's it's lovely to be here uh, and uh, veronica led us through the quiz uh, she shared three scripture verses uh, explaining trying to uh, put in uh, and uh, make us understand uh, where does love come from uh, god is the author and uh, where love actually derives from uh, so uh, as we as we so we'll uh, spend some time in prayer um uh i want you to maybe if you want to stay off uh the chat box and spend uh, some time with yourself and uh, more importantly with jesus uh let's let's go back to that one verse which we heard 1 john chapter 4 verse 8 whoever does not love does not know god because god is love as we sit here today uh let's ask ourselves do we love do we love our parents our siblings people around our friends we might say we love yes but we might not be as perfect as god's love which is unconditional but still we try to love we strive to love that's because we are made in the image and likeness of god this longing to love in god's creation that is us signifies that god god's love is manifested through each and every one of us it can be through small deeds helping our parents doing the dishes helping our friend with studies playing together god is manifested every time when we help and love each other And so here's the point God is simply love. When we say love, he's patient, he's kind. At this moment when we sit down, we realize we breathe. We no 
know that we are alive let's thank this god for his love thank you jesus for this beautiful moment this beautiful realization of your love in our lives Firstly for me the greatest realization or the greatest gift in my life has been to know the person of Jesus to experience his love and when we are set on fire with this love of God we tend to keep ourselves the end and every other person in our life first And as we take this hymn let's thank God and tell him yes Jesus that knowing you has been the best moment in my life All I once held dear built my life upon all this world reveres and wars to war all i once thought came i have counted loss spent and were less now compared to knowing you Jesus knowing you there is no greater thing you're my hell you're the best you're my joy my righteousness and i love you no in you jesus no in you there is no greater thing you're my hell you're the best you're my joy my righteousness and i love you Lord. yes my dear friends god loves us the way we are he accepts us the way we are in our frailty in our weaknesses He knows our moments of fall of of nervousness of anxiety He knows us through and through But the most beautiful thing about him is that he still loves us the way we are So as we come before this loving father loving friend of us let's present ourselves the way we are raw sinful anxious nervous if we are happy joyful let's present ourselves the way we are today for he tells you love me as you are give me your heart love me as you are this moment deep down in our heart when we thank jesus when we open our heart let's lay down our lives our lives of frailty of weaknesses our lives of ignorance present ourselves the way we are
Let's give ourselves to this loving God of us and ask him to take complete control. Let's ask him to open our heart to his love. And in all that we do, act, say, think, all glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and now shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace to all of you. We are talking about a subject that needs talking about every day. We talk about a subject that is most misunderstood on any day. You know, if I were to ask any mature person, what is the thing that makes him or her the happiest? What is the biggest achievement in life? What is the best gift that you could give or receive on any day? What is it that makes you a saint? The answer? Well, to most questions, the answer of a person would be love. That's what we're talking about today. Scripture talks about love between God and humans, humans and humans. Jesus minces no words in saying, love your enemies. 
He also says there is no greater love than to lay down your life for your friends. And then the curveball. He says God is love. He does not say God is loving or a lover. He's that too. It does not say God is loving or lover. Because he is love in every sense of it, his whole being. And today we are talking about love like we should, delving deep into this topic. Because yes, my friends, today's the day we get a deep understanding of authentic love. Joining me today for discussions and to point us in the right directions are, well, our beloved Father Stanley, who is the director of media, director of Equatica and Edelie. Welcome, Father Stanley. Thank you. Also on the panel today, we have none other than Mr. Yusuf Masi, who is the previous coordinator of Jesus U Delhi, a very creative individual and an inspiring elder to all of us. Presently, he's part of the JY national team. So welcoming both of you once again. And for those of you who don't know, this is me, Anju. I'm going to be with you through this discussion as we try and understand God is love and the essence of this statement. And how are we supposed to live this noun of love as the verb of living love? Uh, to begin with, Father, I would come to you. And the question is, what do Catholics believe about when we talk about love? And what do you say is love? You know, finding love as a noun and being able to love better as a verb. We all tend to use love so casually in our day-to-day -day life. Uh, it is so valid to say, I love my mother. Equally, it is valid to say, I love ice cream. Equally, it is valid to say, I love that movie. So it's, it's, it's very tricky. And uh, should we even really differentiate between these different kinds of love? What is this four-letter word? And what does the Catholic Church say? Or what is the actual sense of it? Okay, thank you, Anju, uh, and uh, welcome, Yusuf. And thank you very much, everybody, for getting me into into this uh, co controversial topic, which I've been used to all these years of my life, going to the television room, only to be hammered by the participants when you stand for what the church teaches. You know, the biggest problem when you talk about love is the word itself. The whole problem is. You know, the English language has limited us in expressing uh, what is love is all about. You know, like if you take, uh, just in casually if you say in Hindi, Pyar, we have so many words to say, Ishq, Mohabbat, Teen to isa hi aag jata mo pe na, Boh sare sabd pari, Pariyah vachi jo hai, We can say plenty of words about love. And when you say about Pyar, Prem, or a love feeling on that time. Ishq, it, you know, this has to something to do with the romantic love. When you say about Mohabbat, I think it's a little more wider. Pyar also is something like that. Every time when you speak, you know, these words have different intensity whenever you speak about it. Okay. So in order to understand that, I think it's ideal to understand that love, L-O-V-E, love, has to be understood how it has been used in the scriptural context. Okay. A love is simple word, single word used in the English language for so many kinds of love that has been used in the Bible. Okay, so I think I should talk to you about the the what they call the root word, uh, or rather how it is used in Greek. Okay, the New Testament for information, you know very well that it is written in Greek language. Okay. Though the Old Testament is more in Hebrew and partially in Greek, but then New Testament is completely on Greek language. So I think we should uh, begin with a word called uh, storge, S-T-O-R-G, storge, which means familiar love. That means storge. your love, that uh, the affection, the, the natural affection which is applied or experienced in families between mother, son, sister, brother, father, daughter, all that is called in the in the Greek language is called storage. 
so that is the beginning of uh, the human expression when when it goes in hindi we call mamta you know that word which we only use when it comes to mother and child relation mamta aur ek bade buzurg aadmi ko kisi aur ke prati jo to apna prem dikhana hai tab we mamta ki baat hai so storge or gay is something similar to that but then what happens is it is another word for love is there are basically about eight words in the greek about love to express love uh, there are eight words the first one is tor game and the second one is called eros that means the romantic passionate love so we we know that word very well in english we use the erotic expressions ero, ero, erotic yeah. word that we use commonly okay it's about passionate love basically sexual lust sexual pleasure so when uh, when the wider sense of the word people use this word what is called eros as love you know but eros is another version of love when there is something called philia philia is affection okay affection it's also love but it's a different name now philosophy that's a word you hear philosophy philosophy means sophia is actually wisdom philo is love the love of wisdom the person who has got a love for wisdom and knowledge is actually called a philosopher so the third word in this line is philia philia is normal love that we can have you know like uh, you know uh, there is also i don't know whether you know there is a word called in english called the platonic platonic love okay platonic that's love. more yes, like between friends uh, i think but, yeah that's actually more like an affectionate love that you know it's like uh, you don't demand or there is no erosion erotic feelings are involved it is not a store gate sort of family love all those things okay and there is also there is something called uh, ludus you know l u d u s ludus which is playful love okay what we could say is uh, you know like uh, just time pass wali you know jo crush wala hota hai usi ko in greek people say ludus ludus okay uh, it's a time pass wala love maybe what you have a love for the animal could be something called ludus you know like uh, playful no you enjoy the time affection you know maybe uh, the, the cuddling of a young lovers okay uh, or newly married couple or the how do you cuddle some people this is actually called ludus in english in in greek so that's more playful love see there is how things are enduring then now there is something called pragma okay pragma pragma is actually means more what you call enduring love okay there is a love built it's it's built on commitment so let's say yusuf must be married for how many 13 years 14 years yeah okay 15 they come uh, 15 years we call it uh, in the language of the church it is called the covenant so in that covenant what is important the pragma the love word from greek pragma it's an enduringly enduring love that is there it's just then and because it shows patience experience of tolerance whatever st paul would say in chapter 13 has to be understood from this pragma point of view there is also another word called um, philothesia philothesia Philo- you remember philia there is another called philothesia philothesia is actually self love okay i love myself okay all of us need to love ourselves okay self love and love of self these are two different words uh, concepts everything is a self love uh, jesus says love your neighbor as thyself the primary That's parameter awesome. in this is is to love myself love. first accept me as i am as god has made me and the way i am my weaknesses my points i accept myself when you accept yourself it is easy for you to accept the other people as they are that's what jesus uh, says you know love yourself love your neighbor as yourself so if i don't love i am a bad man i said no i am not good i don't good looking good my hair is not there maybe it is growing bad i am like dark i can't speak english properly i don't love myself i don't myself how can i ever love the neighbor so the primary parameter in jesus is concept also loving oneself so love of self love i love myself that's called philothesia and the last one what we say generally is called the agape okay agape uh, maybe one more is there agape is the universal love uh, which has got no uh, you can love anybody that's a kind of a spiritual status that we call sometimes we also call about mass 
as something it's like uh, uh, agape coming coming together for fellowship boundless compassion infinite infinite empathy okay uh, that is extended to everyone not only to the jesus or only the christian but it is extended to everyone where there are family members distant strangers friends wife everybody is there that's one more love that's called the mania okay mania is obsessive love okay now this uh, eight things that i have shared with you shared with you maybe starting with uh, eros philia storge agape uh, what is called mania ludus prasma uh, philatesia all these eight things are actually love in different forms but unfortunately in the english language we have only one word to say love love now uh, uh, god jesus says in god is love no in john chapter 4 8 we say this god is love so what is love god as and you very right he said god is love he is not says god is loving he is a lover he is loving no he is love the infinite ultimate omnipotent presence of the fullness what we call is the fullness of love is god himself so whatever is we said in this eight points uh, that all oh, everything is there in its fullness in god but you pick up one sense thing and say maybe what you call uh, my my ludus you know my playful love uh, playful love you say that is the love uh, how can you claim that is uh, that is god we cannot so the biggest problem is when you say about love it has to be understood in the nature in it today the biggest mistake the world is making is love is been compared with uh, lust or rather love is been replaced with lust so sexual inclinations towards the other person it is a romantic love yes but it is not calling you for a universal agape okay it is not calling you for a kind of a storge it does not call you for pragma so it all depends on how you understand the kind of a concept that is in shared so the problem is the world says this all of us watch that and we try to say this is it this is it i'm trying to do that so as a noun and a verb it has to be understood from the way you do it like, i love ice cream that will be something like a ludus you know it's like a playful thing but i love ludus, my mother yeah, it's storge love, yeah ah it's a storge i love my mother i love my pet is again ludus okay my love my wife as you said in or i love my husband as anju would say that's a pragma it's a covenantal commitment that you making it's an enduring thing so these are the things actually we need to understand when we speak about love you know maybe Uh, in a tamil is a beautiful language you know it has got a very few uh, l- alphabets so when you read one pa you have to actually see the context and make out what is the word it is going to be okay so we say they write bharat only one pa and one ta and uh, mandra and ta so it's one thing so it has to be bharat bharat or parad parad everything has to be understood from the sentence that is been made you understand what i'm trying to more of most of this constant like the 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 the, the vowel based words are like that so to say love the word has to be used in the context of uh, uh, it is been expressed okay now i have uh, i am as a priest i i love anju or i love any other girl here can you say can you see that in a kind of a erotic formation or a pragma i can't Uh, that has to be seen as something like a agape like a universal compassionate love that extends to everybody and anybody which is what jesus actually done his crucifixion he is looking out to him and it is love in its fullness so that kind of a self giving love is that we need to understand as god okay i think uh, i spoke a lot uh, okay all right uh father uh, uh, the way you're saying about context you know it's a very important to understand within a context uh so our creators love they say that you know uh, when a person is creator created or anything any object or anything is created the creator knows best in similar fashion i would like to ask you uh, you know uh, very briefly if you could share uh, the purpose of life and the purpose of an individual in context of god's love 
how does god's love play uh, you know a role and uh, what is expected of us if 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 it's a right okay. question and, to uh, ask if you think it yeah actually what, what what did god said after creating man and woman he said simply in the book of genesis says like you know what did he say be take care of the nature basically the master of the nature and uh, multiply and be fruitful okay to the man what he said man and woman it is said multiply and be fruitful so my uh, church is seeing from that uh, god wanted like to when catechism also we say god called called us to to love him to be with him to serve him and to be with him forever so in that context also god wanted man to join in his creative power by giving us the chance to procreate okay produce so be fruitful and multiply and be fruitful which he commanded to all the animals all the species and everybody and same thing is been given to human being as well and we are called the crown of creation to care for the nature we have actually given up what we call the natural selection is all over we are actually selecting things for ourselves there is one of the major problem that is happening in the world so god in his ultimate wisdom wants man and woman to love in perfect union okay perfect union means it's a kind of a legal marriage of a natural sense of the word uh, then uh, continue to nourish and uh, continue to care for the earth and the universe multiplying and progressing that's why in the church marriage has got has got the procreation is a kind of an important factor in the marriage the consummation of marriage sexual act is an important thing in actually making a marriage valid in the church so god's ultimate wisdom is for man and woman to come together to have a pragma in their relationship which has got inclusion of all the eight aspects of love in it okay there is erotic love is there there is familial love is there there is playful love is there there is uh, even some people are maniacal in their love love for the possessive possessive love obsessive love for their this thing all depends on our temperament when you see but all these eight forms of different love is there completely in all of us which is delivered so beautifully in marriage so the church and god's will is to have that aspect in its complete sense yes <coughs> uh father first of all i have to say you know i think it was very limited time to learn about the types of love and i think we we'll definitely want to come back to you one day to learn about all you know uh, truly deeply about uh, the things that you've said uh, and i'm sure uh, many of you have learned the names and are going to keep asking father and pestering him to learn more about these so that we can love and live better uh, come to you so uh, bhai uh, my uh, question comes to father also said you know love is used very casually we say uh, everyone wants to love everyone wishes to be loved we have opportunities to be loved uh, but there is also a slogan of love is love which is going around uh, you know it's like saying uh, food is food but uh, not all food is good right so how do we differentiate that first is that second i want to ask is uh, when we say i love an ice cream or uh, you know i love a person uh, in terms of intimacy and that romantic love like father rightly said romantic love is kind of limiting the uh, context of love in the world presently so people tend to identify themselves by their sexual inclinations there is a, you know i would say i'm a bisexual i'm a transsexual i'm a homosexual i'm a asexual and that's begun to you know delve deep and people think that is who they are in the same context it's also many times about their profession they would say i'm an engineer i'm an accountant i'm not particularly limiting the sexuality aspect but people tend to you know limit themselves to particular aspects so i want to get deep into the question of love and also ask you you know from with your first example is their identity and is it limited to these aspects uh, can you please repeat the last part uh, the last thing that last sentence that you said anju 
uh, I was wanting to know: Is our identity limited to our sexuality? Is it limited to our profession? Is it limited to uh, something that we follow? What you know? How do we define our identity in terms of God's love? In terms of how He sees us? For everybody out there who's saying, you know, uh, when people question you, people ask you. It's it's it seems to be a question on their identity. Sure. Um, well, um, thank you for the question, Anju, and it's quite pertinent also. Um, I mean, from my own childhood, no, um, what I have experienced is um, we we tend to get conditioned with so many things that you know happens around us, the various experiences that we have, and uh, from very uh, I mean uh, very early years, I, I remember that you no, know, uh, when I started going to school. Uh, going for report cards you know uh, there there are two sets of children no as if you no know, uh, on the uh, parent teacher meeting when the children go one set of children are being dragged by their parents no those are the ones you realize that yaar in logo ki report card puri lal hai no it's all red that's why they are being pulled by the parents and the other ones who know that they are the champions of bahut acche marks aaye hain and they like you no know, walk in front of their parents you no know, bahut khushi se jaate hain theek hai na and when they come back also it is the very uh, uh, it's very peculiar the way that you, you know understand ki jo bachche pata hai unka sab lal lal hai andar to they know ghar pe ja ke acche wali milne wali hai unko no they, they are going to get it and the other ones they are happy that the parents ha beta let's go for an ice cream let's go for a pizza so what we see here is is a conditioning that if you do something uh, you will get a specific type of treatment okay so th- that is where we tend to see our identity in in situations like this ki agar main kuch karunga only then i am worth only then i am accepted uh, the other thing that i have seen is uh, we also te- we are also conditioned by the world by the media uh, uh, with thinking in terms of i am what i own ki jo cheez mere paas hai usi se meri identity define hoti hai and we see uh, no Uh, in today the competition to wear brands you know ki mere paas ye brand ka phone hai to i will be accepted agar mere paas ye brand ke joote hain ye brand ke kapde hain so we we tend to uh, you know be affected by uh, the things that i own and lastly the opinion of others ki if uh, from my childhood you uh, know uh, some teachers had an opinion of me the kiar tum to ghade ho tumhe kuch samajh mein nahi aata and i accepted that fact and you no know, later in life i i actually flunked in classes and it was basically ye teen cheeze hain which kind of affects us so uh, much ki hum apni identity uh, in cheezon mein dhoondte hain but the fact when define uh, karte hain yeah define karte hain but uh, when we see jesus no when jesus was say uh, being baptized no uh, in the river jordan no he hadn't done any miracle at that time he hasn't raised anyone no he hasn't spoken any words and yet the heavens opened and he said this is my beloved child with whom i'm well pleased i'm well pleased so, yeah so we need not do anything he was a son of a carpenter no one knew what he owned theek hai na he had not done anything he did not own anything but yet he was the beloved child so that is what our true identity is so our attractions cannot be our identity our attractions can changed over a period of time but the intrinsic uh, dignity with which we are created you uh, know uh, god has created us that remains and that is that i am a child of god yeah wow oh, how beautiful is that no matter what we do no matter who we are we all are children of god uh, now with that in context uh, father coming to you if god is love why is that today a lot of people saying that church is against love and uh, why is the phrase of you know homosexuality asexuality all of this considered such a big taboo to talk about or uh, you know people feel uh, that they won't be included uh, what what do you think about that father is it a yeah, you know is it a wrong notion or how no actually what holy father very beautifully said uh, Uh, in the context of the homosexual community, he said, uh, "I will look at them as God looks at them." Okay, it's a very clear statement that he's made. In the sense, 
uh, if a man makes it like some people say some some are naturally inclined towards again the same sex some are not some build up all those things are there the condition which we are growing up imagine a imagine a maybe a lesbian couple bringing up a child do you think that child will grow up as a kind of a complete person when we talk about uh, what you call wired differently male sexual and uh, male female sexual emotional social psychological differences but we are not complete in ourselves we complement in each other okay so when you say about the their father and the mother that's a kind of a called natural selection what we call also in the church called the natural law by natural law a man and a woman is supposed to come together and bring up children bring beget children for for the world okay that's a kind of a fruit of their body okay that's a kind of a natural selection you understand because every plant like i just going to cut bajra which is there you plant the seed there it grows up and it blooms and it, with yes. that its life ends that's a kind of a natural selection so now as a child grows i grow up and i become a matured man i am supposed to get married to a woman okay not a man then i am i beget a child and i die and my child grow up that's a kind of a natural process of growing Second. up that's a kind of progeny has been continued and church upholds that natural law in the full context of it so if a man makes a choice that i am a homosexual and i want to continue in that the church definitely will not make a judgment over that person saying that you are wrong you shouldn't be doing but church will help that person to come out of a emotional psychological healing which wherever he needs to do that now a homosexual wants to become a priest or a religious you are welcome provided you are able to kind of sacrifice your sexual tendencies for the sake of the kingdom like all of us i am a heterosexual but when i choose to be a priest i am supposed to sacrifice my sexual tendencies for the kingdom of god but the church in a beautiful like a beautiful mother she welcomes everybody into her abode but as i keep on saying when the church says you should not get married as a lesbian or a homosexual couples that's not natural that is against the divine law natural law i think if you want to continue to be practicing in that faith i should we should abide by that so the church is very clear we are not condemning but if you want to practice the catholic faith in fullness your sexual uh, sorry to use the word today they will not accept this deviation uh, has to be rectified and uh, then we help you to grow and come over because church actually wants that natural form of selection natural progeny natural growth has to be continued and church definitely becomes a guardian to protect that that's it thank you father so to paraphrase i think church embraces each and every one of us uh, despite our inclinations it loves just like the holy father says but sometimes it cannot embrace everything that you do is how i think father wants to put it and is uh, the message from the church uh, bhaiya coming to you uh, my question is a uh, lot of people probably uh, have same sort of sex attractions and uh, may not have shared with anyone and they may be feeling very bad about themselves and probably living in a you know in a, in a close space uh, father very rightly said in the beginning you know our love for neighbor comes from our love for ourselves and god loves us but these people may not be able to see themselves as the child of god even if the church says you know you are a child of god uh, and that is what defines your identity what what should we say to them and should should they be actually feeling bad about themselves uh they are uh, you know probably away from uh, how god uh, destines them to be but again the question you know do they love themselves how how does it work well the short answer is uh, they need not feel bad about it uh, but the reality is uh, uh, since uh, same sex attraction still is a tab taboo and uh, so they, it seems like there are only two choices no either you hide uh, all these uh, attractions and keep yourself in a closet or you just uh, you know uh, accept everything as it is and just go about uh, uh, acting on your attractions and uh, to help with uh, uh, the church 
uh, the teachings of uh, uh, the Bible, everything. So it seems that there are only two options. And uh, so we, we normally feel bad about things uh, uh, because of the fear of rejection or you know uh, that we may not be accepted, we will be looked down upon. Uh, but the thing here is uh, people do not make up attractions, right? Uh, one cannot control uh, uh, what one gets attracted to. Uh, hence, one cannot judge, cannot be judged for something uh, one has no control over. No? Therefore, having same-sex attraction is morally neutral in a way uh, if one does not choose it. Uh, uh, so basically, when one is not choosing the attraction, he cannot be held accountable for it. So same-sex attractions or he any other attraction, yeah. So same-sex attractions or any other attraction is, is not a sin. So it's it's uh, uh, if I uh, were to give you an example, it's like um, uh, you you are living on a floor and on the top of uh, uh, the floor there is a bank and there is a robbery which ha happens in in that and you were sit sitting in your balcony and uh, 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 some notes just fall on your lap, okay. Uh, you did not choose to have these notes on your lap. Uh, so you cannot be held accountable. You can't be arrested. You should not be arrested for, for uh, the, the notes falling on your lap. OK. So in the same way, uh, a person who will have these attractions uh, should, should not be held accountable for that. Uh, but the main thing here, what to understand is uh, just like thoughts, we have no control over our thoughts. No. Uh, like a bird, we have no control if the bird flies over our heads. Okay, we have no control. But then we have a choice. Uh, if if the bird chooses to nest on our heads and you no know, uh, put uh, bird droppings on our head, that is where our choice lies. Okay, so the attractions can come. Okay, but we say for example, you are in a class. You are in a class. And uh, there is a boring lecture of science going on uh, uh, in, in college. Uh, you are being explained the 122nd element of the periodic table. And you are 30 minutes into that, and you are feeling drowsy. And then you just notice a, a beautiful girl uh, or, a, or a handsome boy. And you just get lost in your thought. Uh, OK. So and after, say, about three minutes, you realize, oh, uh, I just snapped off. No, uh, I am in class. So until those three minutes, you are not accountable for. This is an attraction, this is thought that came. But then a point comes where you can make a choice, you can decide. So until that moment, you need not feel bad about it because you have no control over that attraction. But to act upon, to continue on, uh, uh, on acting on that attraction, the decision lies. And uh, uh, the, the, the after effect or uh, the choice that you make will determine uh, uh, the, the act after that. Okay, so until that uh, uh, time, uh, you need not feel bad about it. exactly. So uh, I think while Bhaiya was speaking, one thing was coming to my mind is, uh, uh, you know, one of uh, during the times of confession, Father was talking about how guilt is a trap how guilt traps you and uh, you know you keep be feeling bad about yourself and you know never get out of it and uh, you never act on the right thing to do so you know even in case of uh, same sex attractions until like bhaiya says you're acting on it you are uh, you're always a child of god and the idea is that uh, even homosexuality uh, requires chastity and purity which is there for each of each and every one of us in every state uh, something that i read and i i, I feel it uh, does make sense here um now uh, you know sometimes and most of the times many people do not know and do not understand truly how uh, church stands on uh, you know uh, people of different sexuality or how you should deal with them and what is your relationship with them if i go on to scorn someone's sexuality does it mean church is scorning their sexuality i think no but i would like uh, father to also share and also another question is father uh, how do we you know become loving bearers of truth uh, uh, you know god calls us to truth but uh, are we being uh, in present times you know uh, again 
coming back to the question uh, how do we go out to be loving bearers of truth uh, for example if i have a friend uh, who i uh, know to be homosexual he may or he or she may have shared or maybe not have shared about it with me uh, how how should my relationship with them be uh, in in such a case and um, again underlining this is one aspect that we generally tend to talk about in uh, in in youngsters and in you know in the company of children that we we need to keep away from bad company uh, we are all child children of god and uh, you know uh, many people tend to think that you know that's bad company kind of a thing how how do we deal with such a situation how do we show god's love here uh actually you know like uh, being truthful to oneself is the primary parameter in being truthful for body call uh, living the gospel in its fullness so what is happening is we are people who play different roles at different times okay and especially in the current situation we always try to kind of please the other person so in order to please the other person we leave, give out our own identity as a child of god so now i keep telling about one thing is like when i re, i know that i am a child of god and i am convinced about it so i need to give honor to my father right the father means my heavenly father especially also my earthly father how do i give honor being truthful to myself so being truthful to myself actually gives uh, uh, at times it's difficult to witness like uh, communicate with people but over a period of time people will definitely identify your birth your birth so also added with being truthful to oneself when you are a person who can have that beautiful experience of god's love in its fullness like partially maybe the agape concept of your love reaching out to the other person your compassion your care the the sympathy that you will really show to them not for the sake of little diplomacy but in the complete sense of the word actually you are actually attracting people to live the truth that you person experience so be truthful to yourself first the question that we need to reflect ourselves is okay uh, am i truthful to myself and in 90 percentage of situations we will say we are not truthful to ourselves so how do we explain we really express ourselves to be with the other uh, uh very beautifully said father uh, i think we can all just you know pray and wish that we are filled with more of uh, you know god's true authentic love that you know it outpours from us and people are attracted to us and can actually feel you know if i think of it if jesus were alive today how would he be speaking to them how would he you know love them and uh, let them ex- experience is love and uh, let them transform their lives uh, bhaiya uh, my uh, i think it will be my last question but uh, I, as a parent i want to ask you you know um, i'm also a very new parent so i keep anything you know you uh, when these things are happening or anything is happening around you want to always learn how do i teach my child especially when they are young or you know uh, nowadays in schools and how do you teach your child to hate sin but not the sinner and you know in this context and i think it, if if we talk about that i think it will apply to every context how to uh, you know hate sin and not the sinner is is my question and uh, again the bad company uh, question if, if have you ever you know as your kids are growing up have you asked them ever you know stay away from them has it ever happened you know just just uh, something i wanted to know from you yeah um so uh it's been a uh, very challenging uh, times right now because uh, both my kids my daughter is already uh, turned a teen uh, she's 13 now and uh, johan my son he's going to turn uh, 13 shortly uh, so uh, i i feel this challenge uh, about uh, you know uh, letting them you know enjoy with their friends at the same time also being a little circumspect Uh, to choose uh, uh, help them to identify uh, or help uh, them to identify their set of friends okay uh, well uh, I, i have read uh, that you no know, uh, you tell me who your friends are and i will tell you who you are okay 
so basically telling that you know uh, the choice of friends impacts our lives okay uh, when one of your friend or someone in your company uh, desires uh, uh, the good of you the genuine good of you uh, or desires that my friend should be a saint uh, my friend should be a missionary my friend uh, 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 should be a, a zealous christian so that just changes everything right uh, we we can imagine what uh, the scene might have been you know saint ignatius and saint uh, xavier you know being friends uh, and it turned out both became saints okay that is the impact that you no know, uh, company can have uh, so uh, at the same time being sensitive of uh, people who might be uh, having uh, inclinations uh, uh, and they they might tend to attract uh, uh, one to the storms of their lives and at times it is very necessary to engage with them uh, uh, it, it it is very necessary to be friends with them uh, it is very necessary to to act uh, to to be as normal with them to uh, you know maybe play with them to go shopping with them go uh, out with them so uh, so a solid grounding is what is required and once uh, one is solidly grounded in one's faith knows uh, the purpose with which the lord has created us the dignity with which he has created everyone and that we are all brothers and sisters with that conviction with that grounding when we embrace uh, you no know, our brothers and sisters anywhere uh, people with same sex attractions or any other person the, the genuineness uh, can be can be seen and uh, you will not be drawn to the acts but you will draw them to uh, to uh, the authentic Others love which to yes to come to jesus so to come to the lord yeah beautiful bhaiya uh, like bhaiya said uh, just summing it up i think the importance is to understand and to be uh, you know solidly grounded in christ and our identity in christ and to be filled with that love that we attract and uh, you know are able to help and also help ourselves um, to conclude i think we are again short on time there is so much to talk about on this topic but yes we we'll be uh, sort of winding down today but before we go uh, father what is, uh, is is there a small message that you would like to share with the youngsters today and this is a question which you know divides a lot of friends within schools within colleges people don't seem to understand is is there something that you would like to say to them uh, you know towards uh, you have very beautifully shared about church standing and how uh, we should deal and how it is that even a homosexual person uh, living in purity and following principles can become a priest also uh, but is there something that i've left out and probably you would like to share uh, as a message to all the people listening to us today okay uh, maybe to conclude what i would say is uh, as you uh, said getting attracted to the other person male female same sex non sex anybody that's a normal thing so please get attracted that only says you are normal a simple uh, what do you call it, normal sexual being okay that is good but then uh, lingering on to that is something that we need to understand as youngsters when your friends make choices okay you should have a foot firm on your ground what you believe in and you, when you feel that you have a kind of a different kind of an inclination other than the natural selection i think it's ideal and important for you to discuss that with the people concerned and get help whenever you require and if you have friends who are actually uh, attracted to the same sex or something like that uh, be considerate them don't judge them be friendly with them as you are always with them and you don't need to tell them that you are going wrong you don't need to tell them okay because it's their personal thing but then you definitely can pray for your friends to come back to normal and natural lifestyles so prayer is that what gives you a strength the other a chance to change and the other a chance for dignity but if you are in that same problem with a kind of a regular non regular uh, attractions then you definitely continue to pray but consult and share that with your parents with your elders no need to share with your friends because friends would not help you to come out of an issue like this 
so that's my something like a concluding remark i would like to say god bless you thank you thank you so much uh, father for sparing time and thank you so much uh, uh, yusuf bhaiya for sparing time and i think father you couldn't have summed it up better and that is a message to all the people listening out there uh, to friends family everyone that god does love you and you are absolutely not alone his love in us is meant to be spread out to each and everyone out there and we just end with a prayer just like father said that here's hoping that we are filled with so much love that it just does not remain contained in us and that it continues to flow out and also that we are called to be bearers of truth not just to be nice jesus did not say to be nice we are called to love and to be truthful and to help and to be helped to conclude i would just say you and i can love because god loved us first and that to not just loved he loved us incredibly and we conclude with these beautiful words by father pedre what you are in love with what seizes your imagination will affect everything it will decide what will get you out of bed in the morning what you do with your evenings how you spend your weekends what you read whom you know what breaks your heart and what amazes you with joy and gratitude fall in love stay in love and it will decide everything thank you thank you so much uh, anjudidi father stanley and you sophia for putting it out so well like uh, telling us about how god is love and ev like everything especially what uh, one thing that uh, struck me was that even with our flaws whatever flaws we are having god still loves us just as the way i am just as the way you are so like uh, we have an amazing god who is the masterpiece who is the master artist of this world and he is super amazing and he loves each one of you unconditionally and personally so uh, as we thank father stanley yusuf bhaiya anju didi and also akhil bhaiya who led us into the praise and worship uh, let's say uh, three hail marys for each of them that uh, may god be always with them and may his love always pour uh, like pour out through them to everyone they meet let's say hail mary full of grace the lord is with thee blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb jesus holy mary mother of god pray for us in us now and at the hour of our death amen hail mary full of grace the lord is with thee blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb jesus holy mary mother of god pray for us in us now and at the hour of our death amen hail mary full of grace the lord is with thee blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb jesus holy mary mother of god pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death amen so i'm sure you all loved this month's cc and it was uh, super amazing filled with the love of god and as 1 john 4, 4 8 says that god is love let's we are also called to spread this love of god to each and every one we meet so uh, like uh, now as we conclude uh, can can i have the announcements we have some announcements yeah so we have a uh, daily 1230 mass online on jesus youth international page so all those who are still not able to attend physical mass can uh, attend the online masses that's there in jesus youth international then we have the daily 9 pm prayer at jesusyouthdelhi.org and yes for all the music all the music lovers we have spotify uh, music yeah at jesusyouthdelhi.org yeah so and as for if you have any prayer request uh, or any intention that you want to keep we also have a helpline number can the number yeah so the number is 8887777 god that is 463 so if you have any prayer request or any queries you can 
uh, dial this number and you can get every each and every information that you want uh, so yeah here we come to an end so god loves you all keep smiling and have a great month ahead see you